When someone you love just disappears, it messes with your entire life. For me, it was my 13-year-old brother, David. I loved my older brother so much. We were living in a small farm town in the Pennsylvania countryside. At that time, we were living in one of the oldest houses in town. Our house was built sometime in the late 1700s. On the night he went missing, I remember my parents weren't home that night for whatever reason. But back in the 80s, it was considered okay to leave your kids home alone. Me and my brother were both sitting on the floor in the living room, listening to the radio broadcast. My brother asked me to fill him a glass of Hawaiian punch. After I went to the kitchen and poured him a glass, he had completely vanished from the living room. I remember that exact moment as clear as day. I thought he was playing a trick on me. I played along. But when I searched every room in that damn house, not a hair was out of place. He couldn't have gone outside because I was by the front door the whole time, and the windows were sealed shut by the previous owner. The basement door in the living room was wide open. The only place he could have gone... When I left to fill up his drink, it was shut. I was horrified of the basement as a kid, because there's no electricity down there and it literally looked like a dungeon. I yelled his name from the top of the stairs countless times, but he never answered. Even though I was 11, that basement still scared me. I remember that night, sobbing uncontrollably, and when my parents finally pulled into the driveway the next morning, I was still in tears when I told them about David. Mom and Dad checked the whole house. I then told Dad about how the basement door was wide open and when he walked down into the basement. I remember sitting on the couch next to the basement door, hoping my dad would walk back up with David. But when dad walked up those stairs, his face had gone completely pale. In his hands were my brother's clothes from the night before. I can't describe how horrified I was. He dropped them onto the ground and walked upstairs to where mom was. I then got on the ground and crawled towards the clothes, exactly what my brother was wearing before he disappeared. I sorted through them. Everything he wore that night. Shirt pants, underwear, socks, everything stripped from him. I could hear my parents' voices from upstairs. My mother then came sprinting down the stairs and got on the phone with the police. My dad ran outside and into the field. When the police finally arrived, the entire police team thought he must have gone outside and got lost in the nearby forest. But I knew for a fact he was in that house. Police officers spent weeks searching the woods and fields near our house. They checked the basement, but said there was nothing. They closed the case about a half a year later. The entire town assumed it was a kidnapping, I knew it was something to do with that basement, but I could never get myself to go down there. After his disappearance, life continued for our family. 
we turned David's room into a guest bedroom. I hated how my parents did that. It felt like they were trying to move on. I was unable to. Losing David was a huge damper over my entire family. Something that would hang over our heads our entire lives. Mom's way of coping with her grief was just erasing all memory of him. I hated her guts for that. Every time I looked at that basement door growing up, I could feel something behind it. I remembered one day when I was 16, I was putting DVDs away in the living room. I was sitting a few feet away from that door, and I smelt something familiar. The smell was seeping through the cracks of the door. It was what my brother smelt like. I got up and nearly ripped that door off the hinges. I ran downstairs into the darkness. The entire room smelt like David's old bedroom. It was pitch black, but I knew he was in there. I started screaming his name. I screamed his name for hours until Dad finally came down. Dad couldn't smell it. He thought I was insane. I remember I couldn't talk for weeks after that. Nowadays, the 30-year anniversary of David's disappearance is rolling around. I can say it's been a long 30 years without him. I'm now living alone, an hour or so away from my childhood town. I had to get out of there as soon as possible. When I turned 18, I started looking towards apartments in town and by my 20th birthday, I was out the door. My parents continued to live in that house. My mom developed stage 3 breast cancer about three years ago and was forced into a group home closer to the hospital. My father was given the option to move with her and sell the home but he decided to stay there and continue farming. My mother and father had a tough relationship ever since I left the house, so dad didn't mind the quiet. Later on, my dad fell off his tractor and broke his knee, and is now unable to walk without a cane. He then moved in with my mom, then sold me the land for free and insisted I moved back into that house. I wanted nothing to do with that house. I had to pay taxes for that house on top of my own taxes. I then allowed tenants to move in. They were a young couple, late twenties. Of course, my stubborn old man was angry with me for letting a desperate couple live in the vacant house. They've been living in that house for almost a year now, and they called me up last week complaining about a decaying smell coming from the basement. By that time, I had learned to adapt from David's death. I told them I'd check it out the next morning. That was the biggest mistake of my life. I woke up early the next morning and drove to the house. It felt odd driving back there. Those fields, it all felt so familiar. I tried not to think about how scared I was of that basement growing up. Fortunately, my dad finally added electricity down in that basement. I pulled into the driveway. They were both waiting outside for me. They said it smelt like something was rotting down there. I had everything I'd be needing. Asbestos mask, 
medical gloves, eye protection. I worked as an air duct cleaner a few years ago, so I have some background knowledge. I walked into the house and headed for the basement door. I'd never seen what it actually looked like down there until now. I opened the door and could immediately smell it. Something was rotting in there. I turned on the light switch. Ahead of me was an empty room. It was small. Looked to be about 10 by 15 feet. The basement had been haunting me all of these years. Seeing it with the lights on felt off. The walls were stone, except for one. One of the walls stood out. It was wood instead of stone. The smell was clearly coming from the wood. The wood was rotting. I walked over, and I thought the best idea would be just to tear the whole wall down. I started tearing pieces of the rotten wood off the walls. Light started to seep into the other side. There was a secret room in the basement. I stopped, and in front of me I saw what looked like human flesh. I couldn't describe how horrified I was. I would rather go to hell than relive that terrible moment. I started smashing that wall with all the force in my body until it finally gave in. The creature in front of me. Just the sight of it made me want to claw my eyes out. It was in a fetal position. The skin wasn't pale. It was white. And it looked like the flesh had been melted to the bones. The fingernails and toenails stretched halfway across the room. The worst part was that it wasn't dead. It was breathing. It was alive. David? I said in a terrified voice. It slowly lifted its head and looked at me. The face looked completely mutated. But those eyes, those eyes were my brother's eyes. It tried to speak. It tried with everything it had. That thing was my brother David. I had so many questions. How was he alive? What did he eat? How could he breathe? What the hell happened? I kept the questions to myself. It was my brother in that basement. This whole time he's been in that damn basement. I didn't say another word to him. I ran upstairs and out to my car. I opened up my glove box and grabbed my gun. By the time I got downstairs, David had stood up dragging his long nails behind him. Julian! He growled. I then shot him in the head. At the top of the stairs were the tenants, questioning the gunshot. They walked down the stairs to investigate. By the time I heard them scream... I was already out the door and backing out of their driveway. I didn't shoot David because I was scared of him. I shot him because of how awful the situation was. That was two days ago. I've been driving ever since. 
The only time I stopped was to fill my gas tank. I don't know where the hell I am. Last time I checked, it said I was in Kansas. I don't know what to do. Should I join David in the afterlife? Or should I try to move on? The most sickening thing is not knowing what happened. What happened? I keep asking myself, What the hell happened?